thanks for joining us today. Um, I wanted to talk about some of your recent releases. Uh, let's start with What's the Vibe? Um, can you tell us a little bit about the inspiration and the creative behind the video? So uh, What's the Vibe was actually, um, it came about for me just being in the studio for six days straight, just trying to commit myself to commit to myself and force myself to actually sit and produce a record because I never really produced for myself. Um, and this actually was during New Year's. So um, I didn't spend New Year's with my family, unfortunately. Um, and yeah, I was just in the studio for like six days straight trying to build something completely from scratch. And I produced the beat and the beat was super, super like vibey to me. And I just felt like it had like a kind of like a tropical feel to it. And then I freestyled the hook, the shuddy with the vibe. And then that pretty much came to me just because of like the whole like tropical vibey feel that the beat had. Yeah. And then I just built the song around the hook basically. Okay, that's cool. Um, so why weren't you with your family on New Year's? Where were you? I was telling myself that I needed to just be in the studio like okay. during this time. I don't were you know in why. New York though? Yeah. Okay, okay. And what stew was this? Uh, this is a studio that my team has in Long Island. Cool, nice. So it's not like a public studio. Nice. Did your music video come out um, different than what you had expected because of like COVID-19? So due to the coronavirus, um, the project, the music video and most of the videos in the project won't be exactly along with my vision. Mm -hmm. um, but the What's the Vibe video, we did an animated video, which is out now. Mm -hmm. And the original video that I had in mind was like a house party. And I wanted it to all be like one take, like yeah. just one continuous camera shot. And um, it turned out to be an entire virtual reality animated video, which I'm actually very happy with because now we're trying to figure out how to take that to the next level and have my supporters be able to interact in that virtual world. With okay, the wow. Video. That's so cool. Yeah. Um, so are the people that we see in the video, are those like your actual friends and people you know? Yeah, those okay. are a couple of my friends from nice. TikTok. That's a pretty like innovative way to still incorporate, you know, um, extras or like people in your video while right. like this crazy time. So, you know, going off of that, um, has Corona affected your ability to create content or the way you create content at all? Like, would you say you're coming up with more ideas and you have more time to, you know, make whether it's like TikTok videos or whether it's like, you know, writing music? Or would you say that it's kind of like stifled you in a way? So... I feel like a lot of people are experiencing like hardship throughout these times because like they and they don't know how to continue their work. For me, it's actually been very, very beneficial. Um, okay. And in a sense where I've been stuck at home. So now I've been able to create a continuous schedule for myself instead of like having to run outside and go to a meeting or like a last minute performance. So I've just been able to stick with a constant schedule and constantly be able to just create, 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 create. And now there's more people at home to watch the content. And it's like, I've learned throughout the years of doing social media that like my audience is super active like during the summer and I grow most during the summer because everybody's home. Wow. And now it's like summertime for the entire world and <laughs> even though they're still doing online school it kind of feels like that and yeah i've been growing a lot since the quarantine started okay that's dope actually that was gonna like lead me into my next question do you feel like right now um because like you just said everyone's kind of on summer vacation you're engaging with fans more like not just growing and following, but actually like taking the time and maybe like talk even more to people that are interacting with you yeah, so I'm I'm doing a lot of a lot of a lot of engaging with my supporters and I'm engaging with them through multiple different platforms, like just literally directly engaging through Snapchat. I go live every single day. Mm -hmm. Um and I just try to speak to as many people as possible. I feel like that's the most important thing that a lot of people don't do. Um but yeah, it's 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 been super, super epic and I've seen more growth than 
ever before since like April 1st till now, which is a pretty short window. Yeah. But the power of TikTok has really, really helped me. Um, so let's get into talking about your project that just came out. Congratulations on your first, you know, um, studio release. So can we talk about the title for starters? Um, get used to me. Um, can you tell us a little bit about like the message behind it? So get used to me. The title was actually it was like hard for us to come up with the title because the project is a very, very, very versatile project. Mm -hmm. All the songs sound very different from each other. Um, so we were having trouble like boxing it onto one category and having one name for it. So what we ended up doing was just we as in my team, we took a step back and we and we decided to see it from a different perspective. Not more not really based around the project, but just based around like my story and what's happening right now. Um and right now I'm making a transition from being primarily known in the social media world. Um and like I said, making my transition into the mainstream music world. And it's definitely something that's not easy to do. So the title is kind of just like a self-affirmation, like get used to me here, get used to me in the music world. Um, so can you tell us a little bit about the production on the project? Um, how did you handpick the beats that were used and like, you know, which producers did you engage with the most? Right. So. Um, I'm a very, very versatile artist, and I'm very picky with the type of beats that I like to use. But um, overall, it was a really easy process for me. Um, I have a team of producers, and I work with them very, very often. And it's primarily just usually them producing the records. That's Rix, Dev, and Prince. Mm -hmm. And basically, they've just sent a lot of beats over the course of like, I wanna say four months. And I ended up picking very few because of how picky I am, like I said, but um, the ones that I ended up picking were um, the ones that ended up on the project. Okay, so do you feel like uh, the more trending songs from the project um, have to do with their popularity on other social media platforms, like let's say TikTok? Yeah, I think um, specifically with, with my project and just all of my music, I think TikTok is really what drives the mm -hmm. the ultimate like popularity of the record. Like, I think it, I don't even know how it works and, and what causes so many people to just want to go straight from the app to the listening platforms. But yeah, um, my biggest songs on the project right now are What's the Vibe and Cash App. Mm -hmm. those dropped as singles before um yeah. before the project came out but as they were as they were releasing singles i was promoting them on tiktok and they're definitely driving the entire project right now so mm -hmm. my next goal now it's been a week now since the project has been out so i'm going to be doing different content pieces to promote each individual song on the project so that every single song on the project has its own popularity Nice. Okay, uh, another thing that I saw, um, I saw one of your recent interviews um, where you went back to your high school and got to speak to your class. What was that experience like? That was a very, very, very surreal experience for me. Um, no pun intended, I have a song called Surreal on the project. Um, but it was a very, very, um, it was really amazing just because I remember being in high school and seeing how the school would go crazy, including myself when Joey Badass would come back and visit. So being able to go back and be in like that position was super like unreal, super amazing. Um, is there anything else that you have coming down the pipeline that you'd like to talk about? Any new music you might be working on? Coming up, um, up next is really just the album, and I'm pretty sure there'll be an album coming out before the year is over. Okay. Not soon, but before the year is over. And a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of more content. And I think everybody should be on the lookout for features to listen to. Oh, wait. Is there anybody you can name drop right now? So, um, I can't name drop any features, but um, we're talking about features for 
my project, but also me featuring on a lot of different people. Okay, exciting. Um, can you say whether or not they're from New York? Potentially. There's there's, 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 so there's, there's options in New York. <laughs> okay. <laughs>